Hey guys, how's it going? Hope everybody's doing well out there. Uh, here recently, somebody asked me if I would take a look at a Docker container for LAN cache. And when I heard that, I didn't know what it meant. I didn't know what it was. Uh, and then I looked into it and was sad I actually hadn't done it sooner. YourCDKey.com is a great place to get Windows 10 keys at incredibly low prices. So here we are on the Microsoft Windows 10 Pro page. And right here, you can see the current price is $20.05. But if you use the coupon code that's in the description down below, you'll get it even cheaper. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste that in here and click apply. And now our new total for Windows 10 Pro is about 15 bucks. Now I have the option to go ahead and view the keys right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. Then I'll click on get the key. And then I'm gonna come over here and right there you can change the product key. So go ahead and click on that. I'm gonna go ahead and change the product key right here. So I've entered my key and I'll click next. Then I'll click on activate. And here we can see that Windows is activated. Next, what we want to do is go ahead and validate the key installation. And right there, you can see the Windows 10 Professional Edition is permanently activated. So head on over to yourcdkey.com to get your next Windows 10 Pro key at ridiculously low prices. So if we take a look at Landcache's website at landcache.net, we can see that Land Party Game Caching Made Easy. Make the most of your network. Get more play for your gamers. Download your games once and then serve them out to everybody on your LAN. So uh, basically uh, what this does is it kind of frees up network congestion. Uh, if, if multiple people want to download the game, uh, you can, like it says, download it once and then, and then everybody else will download it from your cache server. Now, the reason you might want to do this is, uh, you know, oftentimes your, your ISP may limit your download speeds or, or Steam. We've got Xbox Live, uh, WSUS, Wargaming, Warframe, Tesso, Uplay, Steam, Square, Sony, Rockstar, Riot, uh, Renegade, Origin, uh, Nintendo, Neverwinter, uh, Hires, Nexus Mod, Frontier, Epic Games, Daybreak, City of Heroes, BSG, Blizzard, ArenaNet. So this is more than just a Steam cache. This is a LAN cache for a ton of different services. Uh, Maybe, uh, you know, experiencing high traffic volumes and slow your speeds down that way. And if you've got multiple people all trying to download the game, there's no point in wasting unnecessary bandwidth on your ISP side of things. So what I wanna show you how to do is set this system up in Docker. Now I do wanna be fully transparent here. I set up a separate VM on my Synology system uh, for this LAN cache setup. And the reason that I did that is because like I mentioned earlier, this is going to be a DNS server as well as a cache server. So uh, what that means is if you've got something like Pi-hole or AdGuard or some other DNS uh, container on your, uh, in this case, Open Media Vault or whatever your home network is, if you've got a DNS server already set up, this isn't going to play nicely with that and it will need its own environment. So I went through the process of installing a new uh, setup for Open Media Vault 5, uh, installed all of the updates, I also installed the Open Media Vault extras, installed Docker and Portainer, got those up and running and ready to go. Now, I will say that this VM does have uh, two gigs of RAM and two CPU cores. This doesn't need to be super fast as it's just a DNS server and LAN cache. Um, so don't feel like you have to have a big monster system to do this. Uh, you can do this uh, on a pretty basic setup here. Uh, I do not know. I will try to I will try to find out if this is compatible uh, with Raspberry Pi, but I'm going to assume not. Uh, sometimes Raspberry Pi network speeds and transfer speeds aren't great. So I don't even know if I would try that uh, or try this with a Raspberry Pi again. So I'm gonna do this on an x86 platform on my Synology. So let's uh, come over here and take a look. Uh, right here, it's it's got some basic commands that we could use uh, if we wanted to go about it this way. However, I'm gonna do it a little bit differently here. Uh, right down here is their, their uh, Docker manual. And so basically there are uh, four commands here. I've simplified that. We don't need to run the first command or the fourth command. Those are just extraneous if you don't know what your uh, IP address for your system is. So basically what I've done is I've taken uh, these two uh, middle commands, uh, oops, right in there, those two lines right there, and I have uh, converted them into a Docker, oops, a Docker Compose file. There we go. And uh, let's go ahead and full screen that, and then let's make this real big. So here we can see it's a version 3.3. Uh, it would probably work on a lower version than that, but uh, by default, it's 3.3. So we've got our LAN cache DNS server and our monolithic server. Our monolithic is going to be for caching. Uh, DNS, or LAN cache DNS is like it says, it's for DNS. Uh, so restart less stopped, that's true on both of these. Container name uh, for DNS, LAN cache DNS. Uh, LAN cache down here for the container name. 
Um, use generic, uh, so we've got port 53 for DNS, that's standard. Uh, below that, we've got uh, our environment for use, generic cache is true. And our LAN cache IP, this is gonna be whatever the IP address of your server is in this case. So for me, uh, it's gonna be 201. All I had to do is just change that to 201, change this to whatever your uh, LAN cache IP address is going to be. Uh, below that, we've got our image. So let's take a look at the next container here. Again, let's restart and let's stop. Container name is LAN cache volumes. Uh, we do have uh, a couple of volumes, one for data, one for logs. You can map those wherever you'd like to map them. I'm just gonna leave them just like they are. Again, I'm on uh, a brand new install I cut for, no. I'm gonna leave these just like they are. They are, or this system is set up specifically for land caching. So I'm not gonna change anything. Just gonna leave it like this. And then the ports um, are 80 and 443. Of course, I've adjusted that. Okay guys, so this is uh, editing me from the future after running into an issue later that, I, that I'm gonna to try to fix. So uh, these have to be 80 and 443. Um, I was wrong. I ran into some issues later. Uh, that needs to be 80 and 443 in order for things to work properly. So uh, make sure that when you paste that in there, uh, 80 and 443 are set up like this. Uh, also, this is another good reason to set this up as a VM or a, a new install to make sure that you've got 80 and 443 available. Uh, if you're using Open Media Vault, you will need to change uh, the port on Open Media Vault. Um, let me get logged in here. Uh, to the dashboard, change this to like 81 or something up here. Uh, you can actually do that in general settings. Go to port change it to anything but 80. Uh, 80 uh, needs to be available as does 443, uh, as we saw, uh, as, we're, as we're seeing here. Those ports need to be set up like that or Steam will not work correctly. And below that, we've got our, our image for Lancash net slash monolithic and using the latest version of that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy that. I'm gonna come over here back to Portainer. I'm gonna go over here to stacks and I'm going to add a stack. And I'm just gonna paste that in there. Uh, and then I'm gonna give it um, a title there. Now there's a really good chance that this is going to fail. That's fine. I want to show it failing so I can show you how to fix it. So uh, what we're gonna do is just scroll down once we've got all this pasted in there and click on deploy the stack. So right now it's gonna, of course, gonna download and extract and install everything that it needs to install. But here in a moment, I believe, up here in the top right hand corner, and we're gonna get a big nasty red message up here in the top right corner that says port 53 is already being used. Uh, and that's fine. Uh, that's just kind of how uh, Open Media Vault works. And uh, so when that happens, uh, we're gonna jump over to uh, our, our terminal again, and we're gonna fix port 53. And, and I'll show you how to do that here in just a moment. There we go. So uh, UDP port 53 uh, already in use. Cool. That's actually what we wanted to see there. So let's come over to here. I actually want to, uh, let's clear that just to make it easier. So what we're going to do, again, this is for Open Media Vault 5. Uh, you may have to adjust this a little bit. Uh, but basically what we're going to do is uh, sudo nano uh, like so. So we're going to do... Uh, Etc. systemd uh, slash resolve dot conf like so. What we want to do is come down here where it says cache and uh, DNS stub listener. We want to uh, take out the comment line or comment in front of that. Switch both of these to no. Like so, we we'll do Control O, Enter, and Control X, and then we can do a sudo reboot. Oops, reboot like that. So basically, what we did is we just told it not to uh, use the internal cache and then we rebooted the entire system. So once that is done, we'll give this a minute uh, to, to do its thing here. A few moments later. Okay, so uh, after we rebooted the system, we gave it a minute for everything to come back up. Here we are. So uh, you can see that one of the containers start, started. This is the LAN cache. Uh, the LAN cache DNS didn't start because it wasn't in a started state when we rebooted. So what we're gonna do is come into here. We're just gonna click start. I mean, we could have done it from the other screen, but we're gonna do it from here. There we go. So now our container has been set that. So now our container has been successfully added. So if we come back to our containers, we can see that the, everything is up and running. We take a look. Uh, that all looks good. Let's take a look at land cache. Uh, everything there looks good as well. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do, uh, just to make sure that everything is working the way we want it to, uh, first thing we're gonna do is actually, we're actually gonna ping steam.cache.landcache.net. Here we can see we're getting 77.68.81.103. So that's good, that's a good start. Uh, the next thing we wanna do is we actually want to, oops, ping. We're gonna copy this link I've got over here. I will have, of course, links to all of this in the description down below. 
And right there, we've got for landcash.steamcontent.com, 205.196.6.174. So we want to keep those numbers in mind uh, moving forward uh, for just a moment here. So again, we've already taken care of having both of these up and running for the land cache in the land cache DNS. So what we want to do in order to put these in place is come over to here. Uh, so this is uh, Windows 11. Uh, so this is gonna be a little bit different than how yours may be set up, but I'm gonna go to ethernet over here and I want to change uh, my IPv4. I'm, I apologize, I can't make this bigger. I'll try to blow it up in post. Anyway, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this to manual. We'll do that. And then my uh, preferred DNS in this case will be 192.168.1.201. That is the IP address of our LAN cache server. So that's all we're gonna do there. Um, and we're just gonna select save. And then right there is our IPv4 DNS server. Uh, we've got uh, our IP address there and our DNS server there. Uh, should be good to go there. So what we wanna do next is go ahead and minimize this. Uh, we're gonna do IP config slash flush DNS. I like to do that a few times. So let's ping that now. So here, now we've we've pinged steam.cache.landcache.net and we've got 192.168.1.201. We scroll up before it was 77.68.81.103. So let's do uh, ping landcache. You know what, let's ping landcache.steamcontent.com. And again, we're getting 192.168.1.201. So that means that our DNS is working uh, and we have kind of spoofed uh, those two IP addresses to be our local server. So we're gonna go ahead and minimize this. And then we're gonna open up Steam. Uh, here you can see I've been playing Valheim recently. Uh, so let's go ahead and minimize or close all of that. And let's just find a small, simple game that I've never installed. Um, it doesn't look like I've got any, anything going on here. So let's go ahead and click on install. So disk space required, let's drag that up. 1.17 gigs, estimated uh, disk content available, 223, great. Two hours and eight minutes. We're not really worried about that right now. So the next thing we wanna do is actually click next. And uh, then we'll go ahead and click on downloading down here. And we can see that uh, it's not doing anything. Let's give it a second. It's kind of thinking in the background here. So we're gonna give this just a second. Okay, little side note here. Uh, I was having issues uh, getting everything to work. Uh, for, some, for some reason it wouldn't download the files or whatever. So I made two changes to this setup. The first thing uh, I did was actually changed uh, the ports uh, for this to 443 and 80. Again, this is another good reason to have just a dedicated system for this. I honestly don't know if that was the issue because I did two things at once and didn't do a good job of, job of troubleshooting. So that was my fault. The other thing I did was actually just restarted Steam. Those are the two things I did to get past this. Like it just, it wouldn't download, it wouldn't connect, it wouldn't do anything. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what Landcache can do for us now. So uh, here we've got, let's go over here and find a game. Uh, Bayonetta, Beholder, let's do Beholder. So what we're gonna do is click install. So this is a 1.56 gig, gig game. We're gonna install this on my C drive. Now, the reason I'm doing this on my C drive, it is a, it's a, it's a one terabyte uh, NVMe SSD. It's a gen three, not a gen four, but uh, I didn't want to install it on uh, a spinning hard drive just so we could actually get the full, uh, the full demonstration here. So. We're gonna put this on, uh, like I said, an M.2 SSD NVMe drive. So here we are, I'm gonna click next. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and just come over here to go into downloading. And right here we can see current uh, is 4.7 megs, seven, like it's gonna go up. What we're really focused on, what we're most interested in is this peak right here. So uh, we're gonna let this run and uh, it'll be done here actually really, really quick. Okay, so Beholder is now installed here. So we can see that we got a, a maximum speed of 23.1 uh, megabits per second. So let's let's go in here and let's actually uninstall it. Uh, we'll click uninstall and we're gonna come back to our library. Um, and of course, this isn't something you would normally do, but it's a demonstration here, right? So now we've got Beholder here. I'm gonna go ahead and click on install. Uh, we're going to install it to the same place. It doesn't matter where you install it, but again, to make sure that there are no bottlenecks or anything like that, we click next. We're going to click over to here. And here we can see immediately we jumped to 36.1, 51. Uh, and that's how quickly we were able to download that game. Again, that time we hit 51 megs. All right. So 
All right, let's go find a different game to download. Let's um, let's pick distance maybe. Let's see how big that one is. All right, distance, 2.73 gigs. Again, we're gonna install this locally. I've never installed this game on my system at all. We'll click next, uh, we'll click agree. All right, so now it's doing its thing. Uh, here we can see that we're we're getting our new download numbers here. Okay, so now we've got distance installed. We had a peak of 28.6 megabits per second. So let's right click it, let's go to uninstall and let's click on an install rate. So I'm gonna close this and reopen it just so we get clean numbers again. All right, so here's distance. Let's take another look at this. We're gonna install it again. <clears throat> and here again, we can see it's 2.73 gigs. Uh, we're gonna install the same place. We'll click next and we'll click downloading. And here we go, immediately 80 megs, 87 megs, 91 megs. So we got about 92 megs on our download speed that time because we've got a cache server on local premises that's allowing us to, to store those files for anybody else on the network to access. So guys, there you go. There's how to set up LAN cache in Docker on your home network. Again, I did this on a clean install of Open Media Vault in a virtual machine, but uh, if you've got a machine that doesn't have a DNS uh, container on it, you could do that on there as well. Just make sure that you've got a decent amount of hard drive space available to your containers uh, because you're just gonna be storing uh, these games on that server for later use. Uh, so make sure that you've got a decent amount of hard drive space for these containers to, or for this container setup to work and get the most out of it. So definitely check this out if you're interested in gaming and having uh, your own LAN cache set up for yourself to use. If you wanna, if you like to install and uninstall games and reinstall, that sort of thing, or you've got other people on your network who might also want to install games more quickly. Now, again, here's the thing, like you can only, if you want to use this and let's say uh, add guard home, for instance, you may have to swap your DNS back and forth on Windows uh, to make sure that you're using the right DNS for your situation. If you're gonna download a game, switch over to uh, to LAN cache. If you're gonna be just doing your day-to-day -day stuff, probably leave it on uh, you know, add guard or pie hole or whatever the case is. Just know that you will probably have to switch back and forth uh, between those two caching systems or those two, sorry, those two DNS systems in order to get the most out of both of them. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. Uh, I would really appreciate it. Also, again, everything will be linked in the description down below, including a few different ways that you can help support the channel, whether it's becoming a patron uh, through coffee, through PayPal, whatever the case is, there are several different ways you can support the channel. Uh, and I really do wanna give a big shout out to those who do support the channel through channel memberships and Patreon. Thank you so much, you guys rock. Um, but I think with all that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. So as always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.